Do you think I need two hands for this? Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty icy down there? It's yeah, it's slippery. It's solid, but it's slippery. In today's English lesson, you are going to learn about ice fishing. The sun is barely up in the sky, but we have some nice views to look at. My brother just dropped these things off. Like I've never been ice fishing, so I'm here with a few other people. They are going to tell me what ice fishing is all about and that's the way you will learn, but I don't think you will learn from me. I'm not an expert on ice fishing. Okay, we're about to go on to the ice. I have my gloves on, I got my boots on. And uh, Ben, my brother, you may know him, from other videos, he is going on the ice with me and he is carrying traps. Hang on, if he falls, we wanna get this on camera. Thanks guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Be a good shot if I fall down uh, this steep embankment here. And we haven't had the warmest of winters and I did get a couple comments. Uh, are you sure the whoa? Are you sure the ice is thick enough? And apparently, because there's already a guy down here. Paul, right? Yep. A guy named Paul. He owns this camp, and he's out there already, and he hasn't fallen through the ice yet. So I think we're good. He's actually digging a hole in the ice. Ben has traps. Ben, can you tell us how these traps work? Yeah, I can show you here. I can get one out without poking myself in the eye but what happens is this is a flag okay and then this part sits in the hole in the water and your line goes down and you rig it like this so when the fish bites and it starts reeling the ah. flag comes up and everyone yells flag and you start running okay and then you hopefully with all luck you reel in a fish all right how many fish do you think we'll catch today um we're only staying a little while so two two fish yeah my guess is two okay that's our goal we need to catch two fish yeah what if we catch three it'd be wonderful okay who gets to oh he's saying something to us Okay. Right. He just gave us a tip on where to fish. He said it's good over there. So are you gonna are you gonna take the fish home and eat it? No, we're gonna cook it right on the grill up there. Really? Yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is my first time, so I think I'll say that a few times. I've never been ice fishing before. It's beautiful out here though. It's so nice. Super quiet. Uh oh Ben. Ben, we got some other, we got some competition over there. Yeah, there's one over there too. Oh, okay. Um, Are we going to have to fight anybody for a fishing spot? No. No. No, Paul, everyone knows this is Paul's territory. Okay. There are other people out here on the ice, but the guy who owns this camp here, Paul, he got out here really quick because you need to like claim your spot. And that's what he did. And he said the best fishing is right there. And I guess if you want to fish for something called salmon, you go to the middle of the lake. But I guess we are fishing for brook trout. They're not the best, but I don't do it a lot. Okay. But there's a place just up the road called Jack's Traps. They're world known ice fishing traps. Really? Yeah, and they can get up to like 70 bucks a trap. Okay. What's Jack's getting for a trap nowadays? Close to 70 bucks? Probably 50 to 70 maybe. Yeah. These are Walmart, $15. Yeah. Whatever, I mean it does the same they thing. They catch fish. These are smelts. Oh, okay. And it's a natural feed for these fish, smelts. to hook them like piercing your ear so it doesn't hurt them if you go into their vitals and it's not good so 
barely hook them. Let them swim away. Fish in shallow water for brook trout. You ever see how this works? The big fish pulls a line, pulls a flag up. That's how you know you have a fish. Perfect. So the big trout will pull. Boom, flag goes up. And you said this was about eight inches, the ice I'd thickness? I'd say that's about eight inches-ish. Yeah, it's pretty good ice, actually. Actually, better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, especially for the conditions. Yeah, it gets wicked warm in there. This is my Pepe's chisel. So it'd be Eric's great-grandfather's chisel. So I don't just let anybody use it. Right, and it you got to make sure you have the handle on. If it goes down... So I'm very fussy who gets to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and we call that a chisel, you yeah. said? And then there's an auger that has a battery? Battery or gas engine. Okay. That drills. It's like a big drill that thrills, thrills, thrills through the ice. But for eight inches, we don't. We just use a chisel. Yeah. I don't like using my pet face chisel once in a while. <laughs> Make a good cold drink with this ice. <laughs> It'd be good in a Bloody Mary right now. <laughs> well, the chisel's made special. It's sharp, it's angled at one side and flat on the other. Okay. So that you can make the hole wider with the flat edge. Like that, hit the edges. Did he make that? I don't know where they got it. Where he got it. And then you go through. See? Oh. oh. Keep it wide. It's pretty deep here. It's only two feet there and probably four feet here. I know we'll probably get asked in the comment section, could you bring a truck out here right now? Eight inches is borderline. Okay. So on the safe side, probably Some not. Some would do it, but the shoreline's real bad. You can see the ice, the water was higher. Yeah. And it dropped down like low tide. That's why the ice is all laying down on the shoreline. But the storms we had, it raised the water up, it froze. And the water went down and that's what we get. So the shorelines aren't safe for a truck, so. But if you could get on it, you'd be okay. I wouldn't do it. And you said there's open, there's open water just. Yeah, that, all that dock you see. Yeah. That's all open water. Because there's another pond above the bridge and it, it flows underneath the culvert, makes a current. So that pond, upper narrows, dumps into this pond, which is lower narrows. So that current doesn't freeze. And it bounces off that shoreline so there's ice on the other side of the black stripe, you see that. Oh, one. okay. But that part stays open. Remember last time we were here, Paul, that guy went with his kid right down the middle? Yeah. That's the problem. If you don't know the pond, yeah. people take chances. <clears throat> like, he, it was it was snow covered like this because the night before we got a dusting, so you couldn't see anything. No. And he just ripped right down the middle walking. His kid was in his sled like that. Yeah. We were trying to yell to him. What happened? So, really? He, he just made kept... it. He made it all the way down. Just luck. Scary. Yeah. Just never know. What's that thing called that you're using? Uh, skimmer. Skimmer. Okay. But if you're from Maine, you might say skimmer. <laughs> we call it a spoon. A spoon. Okay. But it's a skimmer. Skimmer. Love it. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the joke is, if somebody's not paying attention, yeah, you hook this to the end of their trap. Yeah. Put it down, and you flip the flag and say, "Oh, flag, flag." <laughs> So they'll go run and they'll pull it and this thing's going like this. They think they got a big fish and they pull the spoon out. That would be mean. That would be funny though. You too. shouldn't have said anything and had you pull the spoon. <laughs> right on time, late. Six, 6.50. Right on time, late. <laughs> Me 
Ciao. Your dad did it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Why'd you do it like this? I'm a, I'm a punk. <laughs> I like technology. Well, we right. <laughs> Three to his hat. <laughs> All right, let's. Let's be clear, he has done like three. So it is a little quicker. I thought it would take more time to go get it, but I mean, it is a lot quicker. Isn't it? Right, there is a dog here. His name is Hudson, but he, he, I think he might be using the bathroom. Here he comes. So that thing, um, his name is Eric, uh, but the thing Eric is using, in English we call an auger. I believe it's gas powered, it runs on gas. But it is quite a bit quicker than the old fashioned way. Looks like somebody had a campfire here at one time on the ice. And Paul just told us that is illegal. You, can, you have to have like a container if you're going to have a fire on the ice and they didn't have that fire contained. That's insane. Yeah, you think so? Oh. Yeah, okay. We won't get that, he was going to the bathroom. We thought he was going to, to the bathroom uh, in the woods over there, but nope. So this is a jig pole. Um, it looks familiar to a ice or a regular open water uh, fishing pole, but uh, you can use the same hole as for the traps, but you just jig and uh, Paul was saying that sometimes if you lose a fish on the trap If you're quick enough, you can drop this in the hole and uh, jig the fish back and okay. uh, He'll take it right away. So two lines for one hole. No, you would take no. the trap out. Oh, okay Yeah, but you'd use the auger or the chipper and make your hole and then jig Well, maybe we should cut that open now, and then he can drag all the branches yeah. into the woods there. Yeah. While you're on ice, I can just drag you around. Is there a tree that's going to be cut today? Yeah, I think Paul wants to take that oak. Yeah, that the little oak that's way over the ice with the rope swing on it. Goodbye to the rope swing, huh? Yeah. Haven't I've used that in a little bit. It's been a couple of years. <laughs> Where I live in Maine, in most states in the United States as well, you need a fishing license. I do not have a fishing license, so you will never see me touch a pole. There are some people called game wardens. They are like the police officers for the woods. Sometimes they will come out, make sure people have their fishing licenses. If I got caught touching a pole without my license, 
I could get into trouble. Another thing, when talking about the rules of ice fishing, when you get a fish, you probably know now that the flag will go up. We haven't caught any fish yet. Hopefully we will. But you need to be within eyesight of your fishing traps. So you can't just leave and go somewhere else because that's illegal. If a game warden finds a trap on the ice, nobody around it, a lot of times they will wait till the people fishing come back and then they will be probably issued a ticket. I don't know how much the fine is for leaving your traps, but I do know that it costs $25 a year for a fishing license in Maine. And later on, we might actually see a tree come down. We had a storm earlier. I did make an English lesson about it and it damaged a lot of places where we live. And one thing that got damaged was this tree. And in Maine, because we're on the water, we're on a pond, you need special permission to chop down a tree that's on the water. Luckily, the owner, Paul, he does have that permit and he's going to try to cut it down because he's afraid during the next storm, the tree might fall and he doesn't want anybody to get hurt. Yeah. Right up there, we would probably call that a camp. That's what he calls it. It's not his actual house. He just comes here to fish. I don't think to hunt. He has another camp in Northern Maine where he hunts but he doesn't want that tree to possibly damage his property. When there isn't ice on the pond, call this a rope swing. And I guess people will go on the shore and then swing into the water here. But that's the wood there. That's how you get up. You had a little wooden ladder over there. Yeah. I think I had rungs all the way up, or maybe I just like bear hugged it <laughs> to, to set the rope anyway. Yeah, but I think it's a swing. Off, off that. Maybe up there or something. Oh, it looks like it's been knotted a few times. Yeah. Sure, my Go. length's right. Be, be uh, a little bit longer there anyway. So there's a new guy that just showed up. His name is Evan. And everybody gave him a lot of crap, we might say in English, made fun of him, gave him a hard time because he is like an hour and a half late. But he is going to be drilling a hole with a battery powered auger. Before you saw a chisel and you saw a gas powered auger, this has a battery, so it should be interesting. Hey, Evan, you mind if I just get you on a uh, video doing this? Yeah, absolutely. All right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Looks pretty well, huh? Not bad. Quiet. You like the battery better than the uh, gas car? Oh, oh, yeah. Quiet. I don't have to deal with yanking that pull cord. Better for the environment? I think so. Yeah. Especially if I would have got up early enough and been out here at 6.30. Yeah. Wouldn't be waking up the neighbors with that two-stroke. <laughs> I did already mention that you were an hour and a half late. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that. Yeah. Do you have a good excuse? I wasn't feeling good. Okay. No, I was feeling better? Black blue I didn't even, I wasn't even drinking. That's the sad part. I got home at like... 8.30, 9 o'clock. From work? Yeah. And then, uh, oh, that's not the one I want. And then uh, ran to the Connex, grabbed all my stuff, had to go home, did the dishes, made my dinner. Bree's gone for the week, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where is she? Ah, South Carolina. It's funny. <laughs> What's up? What's making that noise in there? So I got a, it's an aerator, so it pumps air into here so it bubbles so the theory is it makes your bait live longer okay pumps them with oxygen just like they would be in the tank when you're going to buy them come on 
Alright. When you're first getting into it, you kill a lot of bait. Oh. Fish don't like uh, dead bait? Um, I would say some do. Uh, I think trout are probably a little more finicky. Okay. And we're, if you're at the, the shoreline, you're fishing for trout? Yep, so right here, where it's probably two, three feet of water, we're fishing for brook trout. Um, that's not to say we couldn't catch a salmon, because I've heard Paul tell some stories about catching some salmon in like two, three feet of water. Okay. But ideally, right here, probably brook trout. And those guys way out there, salmon probably? They're either salmon or um, lake trout, um, also known as togue. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, they're, they're probably in 50, 50 feet of water where they're at. So they're likely fishing right on the bottom. So I'm going to do um, probably two or three uh, traps for brook trout. And then I'm going to go deep for either salmon or toad. Okay. What's your favorite of the three? Well, I've, I haven't caught toad or salmon. Okay. So hopefully I catch one today, but I really like brook trout. Put all your snow in the hole and shoot it back down. Fish don't like the snow though. I don't know. I caught one last time. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, last time I was here. Last time I was here, right where I wanted to put a trap, I threw a trap in. I walked like 10 feet with my trap. I turned around, the flag was up. So I came, I walked up to it. <coughs> the reel was just spooling. Really? So I'm like, all right. I didn't wait long enough, pulled the hook, pulled the bait right out of his mouth. And uh, um, I was like, oh man. And he pulled quite a bit of line. So I, uh, I pulled all the line back threw the bait back in, was reeling up my line as the bait was in the water, took off again. Still had the chop in my hand. <laughs> so then I got him. It's a little thinner up here. Yeah. Not like uh, the first time oh, we went, man. huh? man. That was sketchy, dude. We, Brent, we yeah. came out and we beat Paul here. And uh, it's just me and Ben. I got my auger in my hand. My old auger is probably freaking 40 pounds. <laughs> And we're walking around the cove, and he's like, hey, guys, be careful. We're like, what? Oh, that was just wide open water a couple days ago. We're like, oh, geez. <laughs> we didn't even use an auger. We just used a chisel. Yeah. And just chip holes. Well, when we were out here, we couldn't stand oh, close no. together. Yeah. Oh. We had to spread out. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Yeah, that thing doesn't lack any power, huh? No. Allegedly, it's about, well, I think it's for the 10-inch auger. This is a 10-inch. About 1,200 inches of ice on a charge. So that's quite a bit of holes. That's more than you need in a day. Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, I've charged my batteries, but I haven't needed to. You know, yep. I just, just to make sure they're good to go. So how much does the auger weigh? Um... So with the battery, this auger weighs 16 pounds. Okay. Your typical gas auger is probably somewhere around 30. Oh wow. And uh, my first day out with this, I cut my finger pretty good. So these blades are real sharp. <laughs> real sharp. It looked like you had like a little light. Um, yep, it? so there's, um, is it right here? Yeah. There's a little LED light right there. So if you're, um, if you're out here before before light, or if you're fishing in the dark, then you got a little light to see your holes. So are you allowed to fish in the dark? Yep. Okay. Yep, there's no time limit. Um, some bodies of water do have um, certain days, like you can't fish before um, January 1st. Oh, okay. Um, it used to be, I want to say it was pretty widespread that you couldn't ice fish before January 1st and then things changed up. Yeah. Um, now it's just certain bodies of water have their special laws, so you just gotta be careful um, about that and be checking the, the law book. Eric! Got some spares. So these little weights, you clip them to your hook. It's called a sounder. It's pretty heavy. And uh, it lets you check the depth 
um, of the water. So you hook it to your hook, and then you just let your line go. And then once the line stops and goes slack, you know, you hit the bottom. Okay. And what, the deeper the water, the better the fishing, or? Um, it all depends what you're targeting. So I'm going to try to target lake trout on this one if it's deep enough. And typically, if you're going to fish for lake trout, you're right on the bottom or a foot or two off the bottom. I think Eric can attest to that. Yeah. Usually salmon right under the ice. There's like a silver fish. The lake trout usually hang out by the bottom. They're more of a All right, so red, that's, more colorful. That's bottom right there. It's probably right around 25 feet ish. My counting is not so good, so maybe a little more, a little less. Brent knows where I went to school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I was a teacher at middle school when Evan was a middle school student, so that shows you how old I am. <laughs> I prefer to say how young Evan is. Good call, yeah. good call. And you have that water boiling for, for water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lunch. Yeah, we're doing hot dogs in there later. <laughs> a backup plan. Yeah, there's hot dogs in there right now. With yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Paul is shoveling off this ice. Good phrasal verb there. He's shoveling off the ice so that uh, you can have a skating rink here if you would like. I didn't bring any ice skates and I don't think my brother did either. It's been a couple hours and uh, everybody's checking their trap. Just to make sure like when a fish is on the line, we might use the verb trip. So the fish could trip the trap. The flag will go up, but it's been a couple hours. So people are checking their traps just in case they have a fish and the flag didn't go up, but looks like uh, no fish yet. We are on our way to what's called the kids camp. I've never been here before, but Ben and Evan are going with me. We think the ice is pretty thick. This little part here worried us. Uh oh, slush. But it looks like we're fine. We are coming to the shore. And. That crack? Yep. Goes all the way to the shoreline that way. But we should be good. So I've never been here, I don't know what to expect. But I can guarantee you will learn some English as we go to this camp. Hopefully I don't have to teach the phrasal verb fall in because that would mean one of us went, oh, here's a big crack. If it's going to happen, it'll happen right now. Oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh boy, oh boy. learn the term overboard. <laughs> All right. If I can do this one hand, I think I can. I think so. something. Mm, uh, yeah, maybe get, yeah, put it right on me. Yeah. Let's see here. Thanks, Evan. There we go. That was smooth. So is this trespassing or are we good? We're good. I think this camp is just used in the summer, all uh, boarded up in the winter. This, this is a chapel. Oh, okay. Chapel auditorium. We can go in. Very cool. All their lights set up, their speakers. Pretty cool building. Yeah, looks like they have air conditioning. Updated maybe? Mm -hmm. heat pumps. Wow. Yeah. They got some heat pumps. That's cool. Yeah. I noticed on the back side they had the head units out there. Really? Yeah. I imagine this gets pretty warm. 
Yeah. So I'm told this is a, a Christian camp, so religious camp, and that was just the, the chapel of the church. Sounds like somebody might be riding a snowmobile or a four-wheeler, quad we might call it, just in the distance here. I can imagine it costs quite a bit of money to send your kid to camp here in the summer. Uh, this is called the Dean's Cabin, so it's probably like where the like the boss lives. Like if somebody's going to get in trouble here, they probably have to go visit the Dean. And I mentioned in a few videos, I think earlier in this video, that during the, the late fall, early winter, we experienced a lot of bad weather. I did make a, an English lesson about that. So there are a lot of downed tree limbs here. Oh yeah, and some major damage over here. Whoa, some major damage because a tree went right through the roof. Yeah. So we might say that tree got uprooted. Oh wow. Not even sure what this cabin is called. It looks like it might be backwards. Yeah. Oh. Fan, got to sleep with the fan there. It says, please don't start a fire. <laughs> the great thing about being in the woods, being completely alone, is that um, you don't have to worry about using the bathroom in the woods. You can, you can do it pretty easily. And Evan just said that I should teach pick a tree. So if you're out in the woods walking like we are and you do need to use the bathroom, somebody might say, hey, just pick a tree. All right, now we gotta get back on the lake. So we'll see. Okay. Do you think I need two hands for this? Yeah. yeah. I took the express route and slid. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty icy down there. It's yeah, a it's slippery. It's uh, solid, but I'm it's slippery. Use a tree root here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we go. Like skate. an old pro. Yeah. You're skating with no skates. <laughs> old pro. Hey, you call these pressure ridges. Yeah. What's that? The pressure ridges. Yeah. See how it's kind of pushed up a little bit. Yeah. Oh. So as it as it freezes, it pressurizes, and as, the bigger the lake, the bigger the pressure ridges usually are. I mean, sometimes you could have pressure ridges two, three feet high. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That was very, very dangerous. Oh, wow. We hear a chainsaw, maybe, at the camp. So we're I'm hoping that they're not cutting down the tree yet, because we might miss it. I think you're just warming up. That's my call to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get over here. We're working. So do you guys normally catch fish here and it just could be because I'm here? I'm bad luck? So there's two lakes called the Narrows. This is Lower Narrows. That's Upper Narrows. Eric, instead of Lower, he calls this Slower Narrows. Okay. Just because typically fishing's a little slower. Okay. But it'll still happen. Hopefully. We're guaranteed to get a fish today? I hope so. Hear it popping? Oh, yeah. Um, one time I came with Ben, we got skunked, nothing. Yeah. Other than that- We had I, a flag, but it, we, I think it run and we couldn't- we just took the bait. But every other time I've been here, I've at least caught a brook trout. Okay. 
So I hope uh, I might move a trap and put it a little close to the camp. I might pull out the old jig pole too. Oh, yo, oh, she's getting solid, Evan. Oh, that's not mine. It's Eric's. Let's just add them to mine. That way they stay alive. Mine's insulated and it's uh, heated. <laughs> Like a nice little hot tub for a shit. Damn. No, it's funny, they have like uh so that's the brand Frable. That was 30 bucks with the bubbler. That, no, oh, that yeah. little bucket. They have another one that's like a small cooler. Not a ton bigger, and it's $119. Why? I don't know. But it's insulated and it comes with a little bubbler and aerator. How much did you say that was? 30 bucks? 30 bucks. Can't beat that. It holds more bait than I thought it did, honestly. And they're what all looking. There, like two dozen? Well, I bought three dozen, so she did half and half. So yeah, it's a, it's a foam inside, so it's all insulated so it won't freeze with these thin, as you can see, it's frozen. So with these thin plastic ones, you run the risk of your bait freezing up. And if they freeze, they'll probably die. It'll swing this way instead of going that way. But it has a good lean to it, so you don't have to cut it a lot in the back, so it won't come down fast but it is frozen so it might snap i don't know and eric i mean if you really want to get crazy climb the rope cut the end branch get a little closer cut the I end branch i was just up there with the saw but yeah no i saw you down. i saw well, you do you want to bring your truck down we'll hook this yeah the and ball. then you can pull it over yeah so it doesn't go on the ice <laughs> we get a board, drive right across the board. <laughs> it looks like this tree is going to come down and eric is going to well momentarily maybe not uh, but he's going to use something called a pole saw to try to cut down some of the limbs first before like the big part of the tree comes down. We might call that the trunk. Come around a fire, the smoke only seems to follow me. Yeah. And there's this one song there that really resonates with me. Smoke follows beauty, baby. <laughs> <I'm there. laughs> 